have a good time. Put a smile on your face, yeah. Keep me caring. Elation Radio. Mm-hmm. Even brighten your day and help you through the night. Bring you good music. Keep me caring. Elation Radio. And here's your host. Come on, everybody, give God a praise in the temple. Tonight we have a prayer. You know you need the word from the Lord. Lift your hands in his atmosphere and say, Lord, speak to me. Come on, fellowship, help me say, Lord, give us a word. Give us a word. world's in trouble, Lord, give us a word, our families are in trouble, Lord, give us a word, we surrender ourselves unto you, we say all we need, just one word, Joining with the worship, everybody, lift your hands and say, Lord, give us a word. Come on, let's sing. Give us a word. God, our lives are going to be better when you speak to us. Hallelujah. Our children are coming home when you speak to us. By now, come on, say all we need. Come on, say it. Say it till you believe it. Come on, just lean on them and say all we need. Just one word. This is what the Lord promised that you would. Things are getting better for you. Things are getting better for me. Somebody just wave back at me and say, I know that's right. I know that's right. You promised you would. You got it by now. You got it by now. Come on, lift your hands and say, all. One word. Just one word from you. Grab your neighbor by the hand and say, Things are getting better. Things are getting better. Things are getting better. Because all we need. All we need. Just, one word. Just one word. Come on, stand up on your feet. I need about three more people to stand up on your feet and help me say, You promised you would. Come on, point up the heavens. A sign of victory and say you promised you would heal my land. Somebody singing it like you really believe it. Come on, say you promised you would. Look at your neighbor and say, I see things are getting better for you. Come on, say all I need is just one word. Just one word. Just one word from you. Doesn't matter what the doctor says. Doesn't matter what the lawyer says. But all I need is just one word. All I need. Just one word. Just
a pastor on Sunday. I, that he didn't know. He didn't know, but I needed just that one word. Lord have mercy. I just wanted to stand in the door and hold my dress and cut my little rug across the floor. But, Lord, I tell you, oh, my God, just one word. Just one word is all I need. Oh, Lord, they didn't ask me to get on here and preach tonight. Lord, I'm just carrying on. Well, I want to welcome everybody, amen, to the to the boys, amen, 90 minutes of word power. And I'm telling you, oh, my Lord, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just so excited. I'm almost caught up. Lord, have mercy. I'm telling you, Pastor God, oh, he going to teach us tonight. Hallelujah. Y'all just wait and see. Here it comes. My Pastor Papa, Vincent L. Smith. The Lord bless you now. Well, bless the Lord tonight. This is Apostle Bishop Edmund, your host on The Voice, 90 Minutes of Word Power. Amen. We come tonight to take you further into our wonderful study. Just let me check the uh, airwaves and the podcast connection, and let me see if the party crew is around. Let us start, first of all, with that wonderful lady of God in the St. Louis, Missouri. Amen, Dr. Kim Robinson, a.k.a. Kimmy Kim. Are you with us tonight? What you talk about, Apostle Smith? I'm here. <laughs> How you doing? How are you this doing? is a great day. Oh, I'm glad. Glad that you're with us tonight and all is well. Amen. Amen. Let's go now. Amen to Indianapolis, Indiana. Let's see if the pastor, Anna Henderson, is with us on tonight. All right. Somebody better give her a phone call. Her eye might have got heavier than she thought. Amen. All right. We're going to ride on down, 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 going down. Oh, I smell peaches. We must be in Georgia. No, I didn't say his name was Peaches. I said we smell Peaches. Amen. That great man of God, Apostle Urban Whitlow, Jr. Are you with us tonight? Musa Shabazabeta Bosaba, Shabo, Bugusi Bita, Eta Moshiri Kubusaba, E. Medesi Jupiti. Hey there, People of God, I want you to know that's what happens when you take Malax before it's time. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. God bless you, man of God. Glad to have you yeah, with me tonight. Amen. Let us go. Amen. Let's go north. Let's see if we can stop in Upper Marlboro, Maryland. Amen. The Bishop Desmond. Ernest E. Richard Jr., straight from the asylum, they let him out tonight, I do believe. Are you with us, Malika? All right, he must be on the road again. I guess he'll call in at the, after a while. Hey, remember, we're going to get this party started on tonight because this has been a good uh, Time of discussion amongst us about this prejudice prophet. Amen. And we have been blessed every week that we have been talking about it. But before we go any further, Amen. Kimmy Kim is going to give us prayer. Father Whitlow is going to give us 
of his word. Let us pray. Amen. We kill the kill. Amen. Let's go to the Father in prayer. Father God, thank you once again for this wonderful podcast. Thank you for um, the voice with my Apostle Smith and Apostle Irvin Whitlow and I and others who will call, come on later as we continue on just fellowshipping in you. Mother, be about you and not about us. Decrease us and put more your ways. Your peace of Father God. You are so amazing, so amazing. Father God, we thank you for purpose living. We thank you for the word. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your son who died on the cross for our sins so that we can have um, more abundantly living, Father God. You are the I am God. You are a way maker. You are a peacemaker. You are a, you're this much, are all in all. Father God, as we continue on this wonderful meat, this meal in you, Father God, let it be um, an eye opener for those who are lost, those who don't know what um, to do. Let them know that you are the way. You are the door opener and the door closer. You know what is best for us, Father God. We thank you so much, Father God, because you are a God who does everything well. And Father God, we thank you so much for the fellowship. Thank you for the brothers who just bring it every week, every Tuesday, every Thursday, every Saturday with all of their heart, soul, and might. And we thank you for this, Father God. We do not take it lightly on Elation Radio. And we make this prayer in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We thank you, Kim and Kim. Amen. For talking to the Father for us. Amen. And you have set the tone tonight. I like what I heard, Apostle. Did you hear when she said, Lord, you are... Oh, that, that, see, that's what the Bible meant when it says, I'm at all with God. You, you, you just don't know mm-hmm. what to say no more. He's just that good. I'm going to leave that alone. Mm-hmm. That's a whole other message. Mm-hmm. Hey, man, <laughs> come on, talk to the Bible. Hey, man, we've been talking about the prejudice prophet. One of the biggest things that I recall on last week that we spoke of was this prophet after all he had been through, had an attitude with uh, the people repenting. He had an attitude because the people decided to get right after he gave them the word of God concerning repentance. And it's a terrible thing when the man of God or the woman of God gets an attitude with people for receiving God's word. I believe mm. that the, his response should have been, let me rejoice. Uh, this is what we find in the New Testament, that heavens and the angel rejoices when one returns to the Lord. And these people decided to return to the God of their salvation, the same one who brought them out of the land of Egypt. And this prophet had an attitude. This prophet was so upset. He like, Lord, you know what, our brother, you just go ahead and kill me. I don't like the fact that these people repented. I want you all to myself. The Lord is not for you yourself. The Lord is for you to share with others so that others can be saved as well. And we are finding that very often in this day and time, and people are missing it. So all I want to say is to whoever is listening, if you are calling yourself a prophet of God, don't get upset when people repent from the word that God has given you to give them, rather rejoice. I believe you'll find yourself being just as happy when you understand that people don't have to go to hell when they hear the truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I believe that when we left off the air last week, we had such a wonderful discussion, but when we left off the air last week, we had gotten the prophet under a juniper tree. And uh, uh, off the top of my head, I can't even tell you what kind of tree it was. But uh, uh, if you look that up for us, Father Whitlow, that would be wonderful so we can describe this tree to you, a juniper tree. And it says that after he preached, he had the nerve to go up on a high hill, not just on a hill, but he went up on a high hill where he could look over into Nineveh, sitting there waiting for the smoke of the destruction. 
destruction of Nineveh to be seen. Well, we want to start right here tonight. The Bible says he sat under that juniper tree so long until the tree began to grow and the leaves thereof became a shade unto the prophet. Uh oh. Uh, let's try to interpret that right there. It said that the prophet stayed up under that tree until it grew and became a shade unto him. I'm going to say it one more time, that the prophet came and sat there, but the tree grew and became a shade to him. Somebody talk to me. What was going on here? Don't everybody get silent now. Y'all screaming at me at the same time. Y'all know better. <laughs> Apostle, Kim, somebody talk to me. I'm still looking at well, that for you. I'm still looking up. Okay, well, I, I'll get it going then. Notice, notice. What was the question? No, notice the text. Oh, the question was, well, there was no question. I made a statement, and I was telling y'all to deal with it a little bit. The statement is okay. that the prophet went and sat under this juniper tree, and then the Bible says that the tree grew. And became a uh, 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 a shade for him. Mm-hmm. What is the Bible telling us? Mm-hmm. So let me. That means when the prophet went up on the hill, the tree existed. But it wasn't even the season of growth for the tree yet. Uh Uh-oh. And then the Bible goes on to tell us that he sat there long enough until the season of production came in and the leaves of the tree became a shade unto him. Wait a minute now. He started off under the tree before the season. He sat under the tree until the season came in. So I guess I better ask the question here and then let Kim and Kim talk to me. How long Mm -hmm. had he planned to stay mad? Hmm. That is a good question. It, How long does he plan to stay mad? I mean, let, let me let me run it by one more time. When he sat down, evidently it was not the season. Then the Bible tells us the tree grew and became a shade over him. So how long did he plan to sit there and be mad? Hmm. Or wow. better yet, uh, how long have we been the whole stuff? Talk to me, sis. Well, I'm still pondering on that question. How long did he plan on sitting there? Hmm. That, <laughs> well, I know there are times when God tells me to do something, and he gave, gives me the provision and and still I'm timid. Sometimes we, we, not me, not you, but me, sometimes I delay my own process in my blessings because I sometimes may not have that confidence in doing so. And even though God confirmed that it's okay, but I still have that lack of faith. And so sometimes people, you know, have this, 
this this complex about you know doing something out of the ordinary that is so big that they don't understand it. Like for instance, this situation. Um, how long did he plan on stay stay in there? I would say as long as God wanted him to. Because at the end of the day, God has the last say so. And that would be my answer. I hope I'm not off base. Well, well it's your answer. We, we're going to deal with it. Also, what you got to say on that? I, I, think, I think that there is no, no way to actually determine how long he was going to stay mad. Um, but I do believe that he was going to stay mad as long as he possibly could because uh, what he wanted to happen didn't happen. So according to what I read, he just really wanted to stop. You know, that's what he really wanted to do. He just wanted to stop. Like, this ain't right, this ain't fair, and it should have been this way and whatnot. He wanted to sow. That was his mindset. So the Bible says that, uh, that, that God had created a, a gordy for him, like a big old leaf, if you will. That's what I was looking at. Mm-hmm. He said, the, so Jonah 4 and 5, so Jonah went out of the city and sat on the east side of the city. There made him a booth, sat under it. Uh, in the shadow uh, till he might see what would become of the city. And the Bible says that the Lord God prepared a gourd. That gourd is more so like a, a, a makeshift shelter of leafy branches. Or should I say a broad leaf? You know, and you, if you look back in ancient times, when you look at a broad leaf, it was used as a fan, so to speak. And while it would, in one instance, it would be used as a fan, in another instance, it would be used to shelter from the beating of the sun. And so, you know, uh, so that sun was beating on Jonah and beating on him. And, you know, if you get too much sunlight, it'll drain you real quick. So he's upset, but I think he's upset for a couple of things. One, because he wants to see what's going to happen to the city. But two, he's bothered because of the heat from the sun, and he can't seem to get a break. That's just me. Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. okay. Mm-hmm. Let, 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 me, let me put, let me put a, a, a little more twist on the twist you already started, because you, you, you twist in the right way. I'm just twisting a little more. Think about this. <laughs> okay. We were just, uh, we we're, we're just, we have just crossed over out of winter into spring. Mm-hmm. Let's look at it like this. Mm-hmm. Let's say that Jonah sat under that tree all spring because mm-hmm. the Bible not mention that the gourd was there when he first sat down. It said God right. drew it for him. Mm-hmm. So let's say Jonah sat out there all spring and then it said that the sun was beating on him so until the Lord let the tree grow and let the leaves cover him up. Now, we, if we if we be honest, I believe all of us on this line know that spring is at least a 90-day process. Mm-hmm. I'm just trying yes. to paint a picture. Yes. <laughs> but spring is at least a 90-day process. And before we really get a real burst of sun, that would wear us out and exhaust us where we need shade. We don't switch over to the summertime. Mm. I'm just trying to paint paint a picture so we can so we can see something a little clearer, so we can dig into some things tonight. Do you are you trying to tell me that he sat oh he sat under that tree and missed a whole season of preaching because he was mad with one people. 
Mm. That's a bad thing. Wow. That's a bad thing. That means a whole Every season time. of preaching? A whole season. Mm. When he sat under that tree, that tree didn't have no shade. So right. it said the Lord didn't let it grow because the sun was beating on him. That means he sat through one season into another season and was about to miss that one. Because mm. he has in, in the whole scenario, he has not moved from the tree at all. Oh, wow. 90 days. Mm. And, I, and I can't say it was actually spring, but I'm using this, you know, to try to paint a picture. 90 days of spring already passed, and now he's still sitting under the tree in the summer. Yeah. He's about to miss another season because he's mad. Uh-oh. By this time, I'm going to throw it out there. By this time, he's not mad with just Nineveh. He's mad with his boss. Mm-hmm. And sometimes we don't want to admit it, but there are times when we don't went beyond the limit. We're no longer mad at the situation. We start getting mad with our boss, who is God. Mm. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. That's true. And the same God, now we still say it, it's the people, but if, if you're supposed to be preaching and waiting for results and you're still mad and the people don't repent it, you can't be mad at the people no more because they don't change. Yeah. Mm. Oh, my God. <laughs> you know, here's the sad thing. We as people of God and especially preachers, mm. we can get so bitter with a situation that is no longer about the situation and we done turned it on God. I don't know why you had to do that. And I don't know why they they doing better. And I don't know why you had to bless that when you had to be careful now. You done went on a whole nother road now. It's one thing to be mad at the people, which is wrong, but when you start changing that bitterness and that sour spirit over to God, oh, my Lord, Mm. you done took the wrong turn then. Come on, somebody, let's talk about that. Let's consider that. Let's consider that. If you want to to go there, right? If people are mad and their anger is channeled towards God, here's the reason. They feel that God has failed them. Now, we know that God will never fail. And people know that God will never fail. But then there are people who say that God has never failed me yet. Mm. So when you well, come on. Situation like it changes their tone, and so now, because this is something that the Lord shared with me uh, a few years ago, and I don't think I've shared it with too many people. I want to share it with you tonight. The Lord said that the that the wicked come from those who had believed me and waited on me. But because I didn't do it when they thought I should have, they became oppressed. And that oppression rolled on them so much, it turned into wickedness. And I believe that he got so oppressed that it didn't happen the way he was looking for it to happen, that it turned into his wickedness. And that's how he ended up missing an entire season of doing what God called him to do, because he had stepped into wickedness. Mm, mm, mm. What you want to add to that, Kim? Wow. Um, all I can say is that when God shows you something, do it. If you don't do it on his time frame, 
there are consequences. And sometimes your blessings can be delayed because of your, you know, your lack of trust in the Lord. I know we say that we have faith in God and we trust God, but the moment sometimes when some some of us, including myself, I'm talking to myself, God gives us assignment, we're, we're like, no, God, no, this cannot be for me. <laughs> because sometimes it may be an assignment that we don't want to do. <laughs> and so sometimes that can delay our, our blessings in disguise. And I am in agreement. Sometimes we don't know how long God would have us in a particular situation, but our our duty is to trust him. Mm-hmm. I see that. Okay, Let, let's dig into this a, a, a little deeper. So we we sort of set a stage that he is set for one season into another season. But here's the really, really sad part. Now, we thought running to Java and headed to Tarshish was sad. We thought being thrown over into the great fish was sad. We thought him thinking that he was in hell was sad. The fish threw him out. And him finally preaching what he was supposed to. We thought we were getting a breakthrough until we find out this man going to sit under a tree mm. but watch this. Mm. He he kept missing season so much until God put worms on alert. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. God had to call the worms and said, Go to work. Because here he's moving. Mm-hmm. God called an army of worms and said, go cut the gourd down. <laughs> now, somebody please, somebody please tell me, do we really get that messed up in our spirit that God protects us? but then got to move the protection because we <laughs> got that home. It's, you know, it, this is, <sighs> it is real. I don't yeah. think so, but it's a real issue. I want to I I I be transparent for just a moment. Uh, some years ago, um, I was living in um, a place called Quitman County, Georgia. Uh, Quitman County, Georgetown, Georgia, and uh, I remember that I had went through something, and I felt somewhat embarrassed about it. Can you hear what I'm saying? I felt somewhat embarrassed, okay, because of something that I had been through, and so one of the fellows around the local assembly that I was fellowshipping with at that time had a tent meeting. It was across the street from where I had lived at in the country. Now, I'm out there, and I'm sitting in the back. You know how you go to church, and you have the front, you have the, rock, the pulpit area, and then you have the back. So me, I'm like, I'm going to sit in the back. I ain't going to say nothing. I ain't going to speak to nobody. I ain't going to say amen. I ain't waving my hand. I ain't doing nothing. So the service went forward. The preacher done preached. Now he's ministering the folk people getting saved, never, I'm just sitting there. And while I'm sitting there, all of a sudden, I saw something moving, right? But I wasn't certain what it was. And there was a green plastic trash bag that had some sheets and things in it, but I saw this green thing oh, sliding over it. So, you know, I saw it again, and I got up and I moved from my seat. And I, then I told the Lord, I said, Lord, if you wanted me to stand up, all you had to do was tell me to get up. You didn't have to go snake over to the service for me to stand up. What I'm saying is we can get to a point where we think we're going to tell God what time it is. And we can act like we are firm 
on what we tell in God and God and flip it and get your attention some other kind of way that you'll have to make a move. And if God makes you have to make a move, you don't wish you would have moved a whole lot sooner because a lot of times the move that God makes you make is an extremely close call. My God. Mm. And, 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 and I never forget, and I know you probably have this experience too, uh, about, but I remember one time I went and ran revival and Lord knows, minister to folk and tell them, God, give us bless you with a new car. And God knows if they don't come back the next night waving the keys and talking about, man of God, when the service is over, come outside. I'm going to give you a ride around the block. God did it today. Mm-hmm. Tell them, look for the check in the mail. They come waving the envelope the next night. God uh-huh. bless me with $5,000 in the mail today. Now, God, while God is doing this, the enemy come in tricking my mind. Said, look at this. You minister tonight, the car gets person testified about the car the next day. The money, can they testify about the next day. Here people have got two or three houses this week. Now I hear you going home wondering if the lights are still going to be on when you get there. You're going home and don't even know if you can cook because the gas may not be on. You know, and, and that's the now he just, he just kept playing that scenario on me because I had I had quite a few things that I left undone, but you know I'm saying God just hold it till I get back. You open this door, so I'll come back and take care of what I need to take care. Of. But the enemy kept throwing this stuff at me, and when I got home, everything was working, but that that nagging in my spirit was still there. I'll never forget I stood in the corridor of my apartment. And I begin to tell God, Lord, don't you give me another prophecy for nobody. Don't you tell me, tell nobody. Here are people getting checked and cars and houses and blue, 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 all this going on. The, Lord. Said to me, the Lord says to me, mm. be, careful, be careful with your next word. I said, huh? He said, be careful with your next words. He said, because you're going out too far. I said, what, Lord? He said, I intend to bless you, but you're about to kill your own blessing over your attitude. Uh Oh. Uh Uh-oh. When he said that, Lord, no, you would have thought my mama or daddy was in there whooping me with, with a dad. <laughs> when the Lord said that, a weeping came over me and a repentance. And I'll tell you, mm. man, I cried out before the Lord. And I said, Lord, you're so good. Here I am being stupid and not thinking about the fact you use me so these people can be blessed. And if you use me, I know you ain't forgotten me. Amen. Amen. The Lord had to deal with me in such a way. He had to deal with me in such a way that it woke me up to the fact, what are you bitter about? I just wanted to let you know that Bishop Designate Ernest E. Richard Jr. has arrived. Oh, have mercy. Mr. Cadillac Man, how you doing, <laughs> sir? Mr. Cadillac Man, oh, how you doing, sir? Oh, that noise. Stop kicking the 
furniture around. I'm actually in the truck. I'm trying to get my headset to work so that we can Lord cancel out Jesus. all that noise. Lord Jesus, help him, Lord, help him. Help him. Did you hear anything that was being said? Um, I came in when we were talking about Jonah under the juniper tree. Uh, and we were taking an observation from a natural standpoint that he may have been under there for a good part of the spring, soaking. Matters don't well, know what. What you got to say on that? What you got to say on well, that? Well, I would say first and foremost, God being God, unfortunately, does not have to move according to the seasons that we're familiar with. Now, one thing you did say I like was the fact that Jonah did miss a season of preaching, which means that those who hadn't heard the word when he first came were still waiting for a word. So he deprived those people. And I think God gave him a quick lesson in that when he allowed that gourd to blossom and shade him from the hot sun, but then in the same instance, in the same season, murdered the blossom or the gourd, and now he was mad because he had no shade. He had no comfort. What is that saying about us? Why is it that when God sends us out to do a job, if something doesn't go exactly the way we think it ought to go, we got our lips pouted and stuck out? And then God will turn around and do something else, and we'll just find ourselves going deeper and deeper in our own foolishness. What is up with us? Anyway, I heard you also say that he got mad with his boss, which in in this case is God. A lot of us get mad at the dumbest things, and I'll share this with you now that we've gotten past it and we've cleared the hurdle. I was mad because we was having technological problems this past Sunday, but I wasn't giving God enough time to work it out for us, and he actually did. So I had to sort of kind of, you know, eat my own anger on that one. It happens to us. It happens. But but you that's have all. to understand that's what the enemy, that's when the enemy comes, when he knows how to get to you. So you have to learn, um, Elder, to control that temper, okay? Well, okay. no, it, nobody, now see, nobody <laughs> said been, it was a funny. temper. Hold time, hold I've time. Funny. No, it's too late now. You, you done jumped in the pool, so let's put some water in it, okay? That was not necessarily uh, my an anger, meaning I was mad. I was a little frustrated or flustered, if I could use that word, because what I was used to was not taking place. But this is where we come to the point in place of reliance upon God. And Jonah, looking for his own natural comfort, basically was relying on God, but not relying on God to carry out his word. He was relying on God to carry out a word that he heard. He wanted Nineveh dead. Let's just say that. And it didn't happen. Now he's mad. Okay? He just let wanted Nineveh dead. Let, let me ask you a question. <laughs> if there are such things as a retarded or mentally retarded preacher, let's say yep. something. Jonah went preach, he's still mad. He goes sits on the tree. The Lord was kind enough in his anger to build him a shade. Still had to take the shade down because he still wouldn't move. He's still there looking at his mad at his boss for the whole thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Was, was Jonah some kind of mental case? Hey. I would think I would think so. I would think so. I mean, first of all, anyone who gets mad at God don't have their scruples at the end of the day. They don't, don't have good don't sense. Because you you would be better off fooling with a rattlesnake than to sit around being angry at God. Because at the end of the day, when God gets done doing what he do, you're going to wish that you weren't upset with him. Because God got a way of setting us straight. At the, at the truth be told, he got a way of setting us straight. Yes, he does. And if he does it, 
Oh, boy. No. Now, I, I got to look at this one more time because so many vantage points, so many view, viewpoints is coming to me. Uh, 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 I got to run through this one more time. Think about this now. It takes a season of preparation for a tree to grow. That's why we're in the springtime mm-hmm. now. The roses and and, mm-hmm. and, and, and the tulips and, and and the trees are they're just getting ready to bring forth something. But they're really going to show us a great blossom. By Mother's Day, by June, they'll be in full bloom. By July, they'll really be uh, knocking us out. So in this text, he's showing us that Jonah wasted a whole lot of time on his ash game. And there's a whole lot of folks calling themselves preachers, just sitting around on their case, talking about, won't nobody invite me? I, I don't know. Mm. Uh, it, it got something against me. Uh, I don't, but it, it, this wasn't going here. This wasn't going there. It ain't doing nothing but sitting around moping. When they could do like back in the day, Get you a megaphone, the electric guy. Get on the corner and preach. Everybody's waiting on the crowd. Everybody's waiting on the theater or the coliseum. What happened to the street corner preacher? <laughs> well, Come on. Well, you see, the problem, the problem is that the street corner preacher is not being seen. That bothers a lot of these preachers because a lot of people are preaching for two. Well, let's let's be truthful, I, and I don't mean I'm not trying to make your show into a a vulgar one. Be truthful. A lot of people are preaching to get paid and to get laid. They're not doing it because they want souls saved. They're not doing it because they want a few people healed and delivered and set free. They're doing it for just the reason I said. I guess I struck out then, if that's the case. I guess I struck out. I guess I struck out if that's the case. I ain't getting paid. Well, let me shut up. Yeah, you guys are on a ball today. I don't know what I'm gonna do with you guys. No, no. I heard Apostle Whitlow, and I know he's just voicing what his view, what he sees, and things that he's experienced. People is, and I know what he's talking about because I have been to conferences where uh, prominent preachers, I'll put it to you like that, noted, uh, you know, asking what you're doing after service. And, you know, you try to be cordial. Well, we can go out for coffee or something. Well, just meet me in my room. (laughs) Oh, really? And in the meantime, what do I tell my wife? That's all. I know what he's saying. Apostle, on what you said, though, let's think about it for a minute. Because most, and I have nothing against on the radio, so don't nobody turn their nose up. That's listening in tonight. I think some of the honorarians are a little ridiculous, but I have no problem because the Bible says the, the, the labor is worthy of the hire. Mm. But uh, let me mm. say this. If you notice in this, because you said something very important. If you notice in this hour, those that come with the price tag on their head, they preach their well-printed-out message. Get everybody excited. Either receive an offering or they got their check stuck in their Bible already. When the message is through, they sit it down. They don't even make altar calls no more. Oh, wow. Don't, don't even say, if there's anybody here in need of prayer, lift your hand. I, you, I mean, I would 
to accept it. They ain't got to take them to the altar. At least out of anybody here want to pray. They do their little thing. They do their little thing, get their little envelope, and you see them in another four or five years. If that's when you invite them back. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Rich. No, no, I was just agreeing with you. I mean, a lot of services, especially these quote-unquote special services, omit the call to salvation. And I'm sort of kind of baffled at that. I'm thinking to myself, why are we doing this? Isn't the point and purpose to, to, to draw the least, the less, the lost, the unloved, the undesired? Isn't that our job, basically? I mean, when you stop and look at the body of Christ, the body of Christ is made up of a bunch of broken, mentally, emotionally, and in some cases physically damaged individuals that found uh, when they came to the Lord Jesus Christ, spiritually were in repair and on the mend for whatever their problem might have been. What happened to us going out there and sharing the good news and letting somebody know that there is a better way? What happened to us? I mean, if I ain't got my $1,500, uh, you get a five-minute sermon. Or if I ain't got my $2,000, I'm not coming out the office till I get my check in hand. That's madness. And whoever's listening by way of radio, by way of social media, however you're listening, if you're one of those preachers that has to have an, a $500 honorarium before you can preach and you basically send your assistant ahead of time to make sure it's collected, well, you're going to have to answer to God for that because freely he gave. And he was expecting you to do the same. That's all I'm going to say. Oh, my brother. Oh, my brother. Oh, my brother. How well did you speak? But let me take you a little further. This is a day and an hour now. They won't have before they get on the airplane. And the other half when they walk in the door. Sure. Oh. And you know and, what? And, I, 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 and I, haven't said, and haven't said, not one word, haven't reached not one soul, nothing. I'll be honest with you, Apostle. Uh, for some of them, and I said some of them, not all of them, but some of them have been burned so bad by congregations. I partly understand, but by the same token, at what point did we stop trusting God? Mm -hmm. I mean, I can share stories with you, just as you guys can share stories with me, having to go. I remember a time I went out to preach. I, I didn't ask them. They didn't tell me what the honorarium was. I wasn't even worried about it. I drove down south and preached and drove back to Connecticut when I was living in Connecticut the same night. Didn't get a nickel nowhere. And there were quite a few people in church. But that's okay. You know why? Because I've learned a long time ago, if God says he's going to supply my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus, God is going to supply my need. Maybe I don't need $1,000 at that moment. Maybe all I need is $100. But how do I know down the road God doesn't have something? And I don't want to go too far away from the subject for tonight. Uh, How do I know down the road God doesn't have something greater set up for me? If I can just have 13 more seconds, Apostle, quick story. That very same uh, service that I told you about, I drove back that night. And about two weeks later, I went to go do some work with Dr. Bobby down in in, um, Hollywood, Florida. I'm sorry, in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And I turned around and met a a pastor down there that asked if I would come down and do a revival. I think I told you guys this already. Do you know when I did that four-night revival down there that that pastor, that church blessed me with over $2,000? When I say God will supply your needs, go ahead. That's just the way God works. When we we have the right spirit. Yes. When we have the right spirit about things, then God can take us into a greater blessing. Yes. But here is Jonah upset, waiting to see smoke. He's getting madder now. The 
because God done put the shade up, took the shade down, and he is out there fussing at the so-called air when he's really fussing at God. What what the world going on? It ain't time for the shade to disappear. Who done did this? Mm-hmm. Well, uh, that's the like that. Go ahead. I, I believe this. I, I believe this. One of the things I think that we should take from this podcast tonight is that God is concerned about the character and the attitude of his uh, servants. He's concerned about the character and the attitude. If you have a like character, you want attitude. So if you have an attitude, there's something wrong with your character. And that is the case with this prejudice. Notice this prejudice prophet. Because let me tell you something. Any true prophet of God sees people repenting and getting saved. It does something to their heart. Any true prophet of God people receiving from the Lord, it does something to their heart. I'm, let me, okay, let me, let me, let me be more specific. I know me personally. Now, y'all know I've been in ministry this summer, make 42 years. I've been some places, seen some things, but nothing moves my heart than when I see people begin to receive from the Lord because they're now in the right place with God. I'm not talking about people being emotional. I'm not talking about people who, who are faking a tongue. They can perform. I'm talking about people who are happy that they heard the word of the Lord, and they're so happy mm. that they and want to do it. And, and then they begin to reach out. Nothing makes me happier than to see them people reaching out to the Lord and being blessed by his presence. Nothing makes me happier than seeing children, young people, rejoicing before the Lord because they receive from the presence of the Lord. Why? Because, it, because and I tell people, it's not me, and, and you know, I'm, I, I am known for this. I'll tell folk, I don't know nothing, but I know God, and he knows everything, and he will allow me to see something concerning an individual. Because one of the things is that people have a tendency to think they've done this, they've done that. It's all about them. And so, you know, and, and so when, when I go back now to, to Jonah, it would appear to me, that there had to be something wrong with his preaching that he got upset that the people were uh, 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 rejoicing or repenting, should I say. He got upset, mm-hmm. offended, to the point where, like, Lord, you know what? I don't even want to be bothered with this no more. Yo, get me up out of here. Be me up, Scotty. Like, wait a minute. Hold up. You just preach and people don't repent it. So you want to preach it. Oh, you don't want them to repent. You just want to get their money. That's some prejudice preachers. They, them prejudice prophets, they want your money, but they don't want you to live right. They want your money, right, but because, but they don't want you to be in right standing with God. They want your money, but they don't have, want you to have a relationship. They want your money, but they want you to be ignorant in the things of God. That got to be what the case is. That's what you call a real prejudice prophet. That's just my commentation, though. And that's... Right. No, no, no. You might... He might very, you might very well be right in what you're saying. I'm not going to challenge or deny it because we've got all kinds out there. Uh, the main thing that we, with, with Job, when you look at a Job, boy, let's try this again. With Jonah, uh, that we have to look at is the very fact that, uh, I think somebody said it just a few minutes ago, God is more interested in your character than he is you know, your little attitude. God is just looking at you and I from, on a day-to-day basis, and when he gives us an assignment, he's expecting us to go out there and fulfill that assignment. When we go out there thinking that it's all about us, all right, we've messed up right then and there. Because I tend to think that Jonah went and preached out of fear the first time and then went to sit on the hill to watch a city die. And the city never died. The city and rather than die, the city began to flourish. And because he didn't like that city to begin with, it kicked him off. And so from that point on, he's walking around with this attitude. Now the sun done got hot, and he's sitting there sweating. They ain't got no kind of Gatorade or nothing. 
He ain't, and his towel is wet and dirty because he done used it to preach and got all them, and all them folk got saved. Now he's mumbling to himself. I'm sitting out here in this hot sun. I ain't, ain't nobody ain't give me no water, ain't brought me no orange juice, ain't gave me no apple juice, had me sitting in the third row waiting for the pastor to call me to the pulpit. Then God decides, well, let's give him a little comfort. The God gives him a little comfort. And what does Joe, uh, Joe, why do I keep saying Joe? What does Jonah do? Jonah shows his behind, like some of us preachers do in this day and age. No appreciation for what the Lord has done. He forgot the fact that it was not him that did it. It was not by his power, nor by his might, but it was by God's spirit that to saving grace. How dare you sit there and grab an attitude over something that you really actually had nothing to do with except for the fact that you were just a vessel through whom, uh, if I could use a, a ghetto analogy, Kool-Aid King stay, on, stay by itself. It needs a pitcher. You were just a pitcher. You ain't the Kool-Aid. I'm sorry. Go let, ahead. Let, let, let me ask the question here. Mm-hmm. Doesn't it seem like Jonah should have caught some kind of a revelation when worms started showing in the tree in a time that it was production time? This is, here I go, I got to use another season. This was not fall time when trees would go through rotting. It said the Lord called it to go ahead and grow. But as much as he called it to grow, he also caused worms to come in and take it back down. Should he have got some kind of revelation uh, through the worms coming at a strange time? Well, think about this, and if you please give me a second, Apostle Whitlow, I greatly appreciate it, sir. Uh, think about it this way. When you're upset and in your, in your feelings, when you're in your flesh, how much revelation do you think you're going to receive? I'm just saying. That's all. I'm just saying. Anybody else? Mm-hmm. But a revelation in the flesh. You know, you uh, point blank period. Mm-hmm. That's a person just operating in their in their flesh because of that form of godliness, you know, and that becomes a reality, and that's why people miss God again because they're not serious mm-hmm. about Him. There's no way to go out and play with Him. I'm trying to tell you, it's just not a wise thing to do. That's just my opinion, though. No, well, listen, your opinion counts. I agree. As your opinion counts. All right. Somebody want to take us a little deeper in this conversation. What happens to jump yeah. after the after the shade is removed? What happens? Oh, he gets a bigger ass. I, I think. I think uh, yeah, I think what God wants to do is God wants to show him. Uh, how he feels about him based upon the way Jonah felt about the people. In other words, because when you look a little further and you're reading, right, because look at what Jonah, Jonah gets his attitude with God. He's like, yo, God, kill them, right? And he said, if you ain't going to kill them, then why don't you kill me? Because I'm better off dead. God wants to know why you're so angry. Right? And so Jonah's going to walk away from God. That's a bad thing. Don't walk away from God. Don't walk away from God because if you walk away from you're on dangerous ground for real. That's like, that's like, that, that's almost like a death wish when you walk away from God. I'm just saying. I'm right. I'm just talking right now. What is wrong with him? This is the second time he's walking away from God. And you know what? Yeah. God, and the, you know what we, we've missed, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen? In the middle of all this, God's grace is at work. Uh oh. God being the holy mm-hmm. God that he is, why should he have to put up with this little nasty attitude of this young man? 
How easy is it for God to just snatch the breath out of him? You know, now you know how we do. I'm sorry. I'm going to say it. Y'all are going to have to help me. I'm not going to do a Kirk Franklin, but I'm going to get not close, but somewhere in the neighborhood. Kids show their uh, unappreciation and show their ungratefulness and cry and complain about every little thing. Come to the dinner tables. I don't want that mess. I could have went out and got me a sandwich from Subway. Get your little chocolate self up from around my table. You won't get nothing to eat tonight, and you better not go out the house. And I better not see not a crumb upstairs in your room. I'm sorry. Okay. I had a moment. But watch, but watch this, though. You, you talk about <laughs> grace. You talk oh, about man. grace. And we, we have children that act like that, and sometimes as adults, we act like that. But get back to the children. They act like that, and then we pile them up in the car and take them to friends. Uh-huh. I'm from the old school. Can I tell you something? Rosalie wasn't piling you in nothing. What she was going to do is pile that belt across your butt. That was about all you was going to get. You better not come to her dinner table Come me you don't want that. Try it. I guarantee you when you get up for breakfast the next morning, you will. I don't care what it is. You're going to eat it whether you like it or not. All you need is one. And see, this is what I wish these kids today could have some of, taste some of the things that we went through when we were growing up. I wish you would cuss my mother out. If you can talk when you finish, I wish you would. She was only 5'2". Yeah, Rosalie was only 5'2", bless her heart, rest her soul. But that 5'2 had a right hand that could lay you out. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Okay, but but that, that, now now I I I didn't grow up under no right I didn't grow up under no right uh, uh, uppercut. But right hand of fellowship. I grew, up, I, grew, <laughs> I grew up under that. I grew up under that kind of stuff where if you didn't eat it right then, believe me, the plate was coming right back at you and get warmed up. <laughs> I will get uh, but in, in, in today, in today's society, uh-huh. I, I'll even go. i even go back to my mother's father. You cut up whatever, you know, not bad. Just cutting, it, just being active. But once they got you under control, ride around town a little bit, and take you on one of them country rides. And this is mm-hmm. this, and this is that, and that used to be a a farm over there, but. Now you see the grocery store done come in. Man, let me tell you something. On the way back home, when that flasher came on to take a turn, and we looked up and saw them golden arches, oh, shoot, man. You, you couldn't tell us nothing. <laughs> man, it was party time. Mm-hmm. McDonald's. It hey. was party time. Mm-hmm. You might have cut up a little bit because you weren't going for so far because you knew better. But when that's right. That light came, when that light came on and we were getting ready to turn into McDonald's, man, it was party time. You start singing McDonald's, McDonald's, McDonald's. Um, uh, 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 now, you got. I can't remember. The, what was the song we used to sing back in the day for McDonald's? Anyway. Big Mac Flail on a pound of French fries. I see Coke, Thick Shake, Sunday, and Apple Pie. That's, That's when like it was that. good. I don't know what this stuff is now. This stuff is not the same. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> y'all, y'all making me laugh today. Oh, my goodness. Okay, no, you know what? Can, can, I, can I tell my you what it is today? Was, my, my daughter thought I was playing. Uh-huh. I said, we we were going through the line one day. I said, y'all know something about that. I said, I can remember when we used to come to McDonald's with a dollar. Uh-huh. And get a cheeseburger <laughs> fries yeah. and a drink. And a soda. <laughs> and a drink. Those are the good old days. Those are the good old days. Yeah. <laughs> I said, Dad, you ain't never been able to come to no McDonald's with no oh. dollar and buy three things and get no change back. I said, you mm-hmm. wait till we get up to this window. I said, you wait till we get up to this window. 
Is this somebody old enough? I'm going to let y'all ask. Sure enough, it was an older person. I said years ago, and I said, matter of fact, I'm not going to ask y'all ask. So, Dami, you know, Dami, she, 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 she been she bold. bold. She been bold. I, I just want to know, my daddy was saying, yeah. Uh, back in the day, you can come to McDonald's and, and get a cheeseburger, fry, and a drink for a dollar and get changed. She said, you sure could. She said, matter mm-hmm. of fact, that was the advertisement. You can come to mm-hmm. McDonald's and get a full meal for a dollar mm-hmm. and get changed. Burger was well, 36. What I'm getting my, to is, my though, daddy. That, oh, go ahead. My daddy used to tell me. He said, when we had 50 cents, we had a whole lot of money. He said, because we mm-hmm. could ride the public bus to the movies and then come back and get something from McDonald's and still have change and get back home. Mm-hmm. 50 yeah. cents. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A burger was only 10 that was a good cents back then. My, my, a my, burger my, was only 10 cents back then. Yeah. And, and Brother Richard knows that uh, in the, anybody on this line, my good friend, Bishop Stalin, who is uh-huh. going to be far down, but he said his mother would give him a dime every morning. Wow. He oh, said wow. he could stop at the store, get the get a moon pie. I'm talking about the real moon pie that was about mm-hmm. big as a pie, about big, about big as a, a frisbee. He said he could get a moon pie and a coke. For a dime mm-hmm. and get changed back and go on to school. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. It was a real moon pie. It wasn't a, it, yep. it, you know yep. what? The moon pie was about as big as a teacup saucer, but nowadays they look like a little, tra- what do they call them? Them English biscuits. Today's moon pie is about the size of one of them English biscuits. Yeah, English biscuits. Yeah. yeah. I can't think of the name of it. Y'all know a crumpet, crumpet. Here's where I'm going with that conversation, though. When you Mm -hmm. mention the word grace, even though we may have cut up a little bit, and it wasn't no bad cut up, but Uh -uh. that the bad get you back under control. But now, when you pull in McDonald's. The back bed, it lets you know how much your parents love you. That's right. Mm-hmm. And would reward you. This is what I'm saying. Here was Jonah under this tree. Son started beating on his head. God let the tree grow. And then he still sit there so long until God got to put worms on assignments and not cut it down. Because mm-hmm. he still ain't getting it. He still ain't getting it, so go cut it down. It ain't time to cut it down, but I'm putting y'all on assignment. Go cut it down. Mm. It looked look like Jonah would have looked up at the tree and said, Good God, all these worms. The Lord, the Lord just found me some. Mm-hmm. But he didn't mm-hmm. catch it. He didn't catch it. Let me ask you a question, Apostle. Was Jonah asleep when this tree was taken down, or was he wide awake? Because there's something to that, believe it or not. Well, I'm going to tell you something. That answer is he was both. Mm-hmm. He was natural. I believe he was naturally woke, spiritually asleep. Oh and wow! I'm glad mm. you said that. I'm glad you said that because that's exactly where I was going. Naturally and, and awoke you, and and in I'm his feelings. Hey, I'm glad <laughs> you asked. Because that's what I was trying to get up to. That's what I've been trying to get up to say. There's no way in the world mm. a tree grows and gives you shade. <laughs> and this is all of a sudden the same tree is full of worms and your shade is gone. God, uh-huh. listen, when you talk about the grace, God let the daggone thing grow because he knew uh-huh. the sun was too much more. But he didn't have this enough to get up. 
how do you sit for a whole season and don't even get up to go to the bathroom? My God. My goodness. And now, and now he's in another season and possibly get ready to miss that season. How long uh-huh. are we going? How long are we going to stay upset about one thing and miss the times of God? That's real bad. I, I'm just sitting yeah, here thinking well, about you that. Know, that because is equivalent. I, hey, I'm thinking about it because I, I'm thinking the longer you are upset with God, the longer you delay the grace, the mercy, and the of God. That's that's okay. I'm realizing that because because here watch this because when you look at the text man there's something that's in there that people should gather first of all God knows what the heat is like out there so God says all right let me get you a gordy all right fine okay then you know here you complaining right God says okay let me get the worms to devour it. Uh-huh. The thing is, God was uh, could have done so much more with him. He could have done so much more with him had he been more receptive. And I, mm-hmm. I really believe that's why God, because they're not receptive to what he wants to do. I believe that God has, please, please hear my heart when I say this. I believe God has so much in store for those who serve him. The Bible says how precious are the feet of those who carry the gospel. That's what it says. So God God has a special thing in his heart for those who carry his word. And you complaining, you murmuring, and God is saying, you just don't know what you are, you're you're canceling yourself from receiving. Watch this. Let me give you a typical, a a small example. Uh, Elizabeth, Elizabeth, John's mother, is pregnant. When uh-huh. and now, mind you, she ain't been she's pregnant, and here is Zachariah talking to God. When he hears about this pregnancy, he's about to say something, and God hushes his mouth. Why? Because he was about to talk himself out of his blessing. He was about to talk, talk himself out of his gift. He was about to talk himself out. They're talking themselves out of what God has prepared for. Mm-hmm. All right. you know, that, and that's something to think about. I mean, God you know, has already prepared. It, no, God has already prepared it and has already put it in position for you to receive it. And you're doing everything under the sun to make sure you don't get it. Tell me that's crazy. No, you ain't got to tell me that's crazy. I know that's crazy. I know that's crazy. He set you up, put you in a position to receive it, and all you got to do is walk in it. And the only thing you know how to do is sit there and cry about it because it's not. It's not. Uh, uh, now I'm, I'm gonna say it this way because it's not the latest model. Because it's not the latest edition. Because it's not Nike. Because it's not uh, Adidas. Because it's not um, a, a Jordan. Uh, Air Jordan or the uh, the Kobe Bryant edition Laker joint. It's just a regular pair of WT Grant. Some of y'all don't know what I'm talking about, so I'm gonna say it anyway. It's a cre- it's it, it's it's a Kresge special. It's a Bradley special. It's an Ames special. American discount. American discount special. And it's not a brand name. I don't know what's wrong with you people. Back in our, well, I ain't gonna go back in our day no more because you already know we were grateful for whatever we got, whatever we got. Mm. You know, Not, we weren't exactly poor, but we didn't have, we weren't rich either. But my, my hey, listen, God supplied. You, you know, you know what blesses me, and we're gonna go a little further if we can. What kind of time schedule we on? I have no about idea. Ten minutes, Apostle. Ten minutes. Okay, yes, I, I want to say. Sit down, I, Alfred. I want to say this. We we we've been we we have been tonight. 
tonight makes six weeks. We have been in this book of the Bible, and we are no further than chapter 2, maybe around verse 7. And I don't say that in no anger. I'm trying to get us to see something. People mm-hmm. have been preaching out of this book for years, but we are pulling things out piece by piece in these lessons that I guarantee you folk haven't even looked at. Amen. And God mm-hmm. is, you know, every week God is speaking to us so as word bearers that we not allow ourselves to get into this kind of foolishness, especially attitude, spirit, uh, 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 the, the way the way of, of thinking that we are God and he's not. Hmm. <laughs> because, go ahead. because really Jonah wanted this thing To go his way Not by what God said Like I said He wanted Nineveh dead But the original word From God was If you go preach There's going to be a turnaround God had already told him I agree I agree But see that goes to show you How we let it in one ear and out the other we're not hearing with the ears of our spirit sometimes. You know? We hear selective hearing is what the word I'm looking for. And we all know what selective hearing is. You hear what you want to hear when you want to hear what you want to hear. <laughs> well, I hear, I feel uh, Alfred touching me on my shoulder, saying we must bring this wonderful in the end. And bash so out he, in the he, head when these days. He, <laughs> he, he being so kind, he said, please leave them enough time to have last words, and then you must close because Kimmy Kim want to put a good want to put a good piece of music on Bob before they really. Oh, have. take your time. Uh, I'm good. <laughs> So let's start with you, Kimmy Kim. Let's get final word from you, Overseer Apostle, and then I'm going to speak and let us go. All I know is, wow, I can't believe that this went by so fast. <laughs> Third days, you guys are too uh, really deep, so I like to listen, and this is one of those days. Um, I really believe that. Sometimes, like I said, for me personally, sometimes I have delayed my blessings because of either disobedience or fear. And sometimes when that happens, it does, you know, allow that fear, allows your relationship with God to be, you know, unstable and a little disconnected because God wants us to come to him with all of our needs and cares and trust him with them. And so there were times I did uh, some Jonah things. There were times I did do some David things. There were times that I did do some Paul things. There were some times I did some Solomon things. But I know there are definitely consequences to disobedience. Yes, they are. But I serve a gracious father. And I know this is a cliche. God knows my heart. Because he knows. I do. I love God and his people with all my heart, so am I. Uh, my name is Kimmy Kim. I'm not perfect, but uh, I do serve a perfect God, and I do love discussions that will help me grow such as this because you guys are apostles and elders and overseers, and so I just love sometimes just to listen. And this lesson taught me that sometimes if you're disobedient, God will cause <laughs> some things to happen. He'll allow things. He is in control. 
And I have seen that over my years as I take inventory on the things that I should have done but didn't do because I wanted to do it my way, my way. And it was more than the second time. So I know it was his grace and mercy because I could have been really further off, but he kept me from getting burned in that pit. He kept me from getting bit by the lion. Yes, it's it, I mean, burnt by the lion, I mean, pit. And I didn't get, you know, a lion bite. He allowed me to sometimes beat up my giant, but he knows my name. So that is the good news, family. He still knows your name. And like you said last uh, week, uh, Apostle, there are consequences to disobedience. And sometimes he will get that, you will get consequences. So I pray that this lesson was, you know, a great one for those who don't understand that. Although you may be saved and you, you know better and you know um, you know that there are um, days when you aren't listening to the Father, those disobedience will cause consequences. So great discussion on today. All right. God bless you. Well, thank you. I want to first and foremost say thank you for the opportunity to be on this awesome podcast and looking at Jonah, a lot of us have to use Jonah as a mirror. We bypass the goodness, the grace, and the mercy of God in the smallest, most minute things so much to the point that we become callous to the sensitivity of his spirit, whispering to us to go and do an assignment. And then we got the nerve to get an attitude when he says, go preach to these people, go share a word with that person, or go and just give this one a cup of water. I ain't going over there to get Yeah, I'm Bishop Black E. Richard Jr. I ain't got to do none of that. Since when? You are still Fleck. He is still the potter. I hope you open your eyes and recognize that when clay goes in an oven, it can bake to the point where it dries out and eventually can be crumbled and not repaired. Keep playing. That's all I'm saying. Keep playing. I'm done. Apostle? I, I, I'm, I'm, I just want to say this. And if God gives you an assignment, don't hesitate to do it. Don't murmur. Don't complain about it, but do it because there's something good that's going to come from it when you do it. The other thing I want to say is don't get upset when what God gives you works. That's the objective for what God gives you to work. God doesn't put you in a predicament that you will fail. That's not his style. He wants you Mm -hmm. to succeed. He came for you to succeed. And not only does he want you to succeed, but he wants his people to succeed. He doesn't want his people to perish. In the meantime, go with God, and he will, and he will go with you. And by the way, okay. Uh Uh-oh, the Puerto Rican bishop from uh, Guatemala is back. (laughs) I just want to say tonight, I have enjoyed, I have enjoyed this wonderful, wonderful discussion on the Prejudice Prophet, and I pray that each listening ear, the Bishop, Apostle, Evangelist, teacher, whatever you are, if if you are a man, one of the saints coming and working in ministry faithful, I pray this podcast has opened up your spirit further on how important it is to be in tune with what God is doing and not to go in your own wing and your own flesh. I want to say this. If you would check your flesh. If your flesh is hanging like a slip, pull it 
up and let God be the length of your life. The Lord bless you and keep you is my prayer. Hey, man, if you're going through hell, don't stop. If you're catching hell, don't hold it. Just go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. God has greater things in store for you. Kimmy Kim, make it hot, make it pop. We all have those moments when we doubt ourselves and those storms arise and that's the moment when you know you need a miracle. It's gonna take a miracle. Do you believe in miracles? See, he's a walking miracle. Stress after stress after stress And you wouldn't even get out of bed Feeling that your life is depressed And everything that's going through your head See you are not alone There's a lot of people like you Feeling that you're on your own But let me tell you that somebody's with you See, he has been there with you from day one, day one, day one. And all them times you figure you was done. No. See, he was right there ordering your steps. Order the steps. And he don't fight for you till his last breath. It's gonna take a miracle. Do you believe in miracles? See, he's a walking miracle. Everybody needs a miracle. It's gonna take a miracle. Do you believe in miracles? See, he's a walking miracle. Everybody needs a hero. Everybody needs a hero. Ooh. 